My name is Kira Salak, and I'm a writer and adventurer. A lot of these trips are really difficult and they're going to places in the world that are often really unstable and I'm often putting myself at great risk. And about 15 miles that way is Algeria. But it's worth the risk if I can bring the stories back. I want to be physically strong so that if I am in a situation where I need to defend myself, I can feel confident that I'll be able to do that. One hundred ten degrees out, no shade, in the middle of the Sahara. I don't know. I just had to sort of turn off or ignore the pain to get through. If I don't have that opportunity to sort of tell those stories, then the trip feels frivolous. Particularly as a woman, I think there's this misconception that, particularly as a lone woman, because I, I usually almost always travel solo, and so I think in a lot of these countries the men think that, that I'm vulnerable because I'm female. So I always like to stand up for myself physically and let them know that they can't get away with stuff. It's almost like a secret part of my preparation for these trips is I, I go to the gym and you know I use the weights and I prepare and put my gloves on and just you know pound away for a while. I don't know, I just always feel like I'm sort of a match from you know many of the men that I encounter <laughs> during my travels. Most of my trips are just very physically exhausting and, and difficult. I, I don't necessarily choose trips that, that will be, but they always seem to turn out that way. Like with the kayaking to Timbuktu, I mean, it was 110 degrees out, no shade, to be doing that day in and day out for over a month. I don't know, I just had to sort of turn off or ignore the pain. When I was in Eastern Congo, in, in this town where they were just killing people because of their ethnic identity, and I saw this old woman, she must have been like 80 years old, and she had her, her arm and her leg chopped off. And I was just, I was so embarrassed to be standing there looking at her, because I knew I could go Get, a, get on a plane and fly home, and she couldn't. She was stuck in this hell. But then I was thinking, if I can tell this woman's story, then I'm not just some voyeur, you know? That was sort of, that was the one thing that kind of made it okay for me to be there.
I was driving in this remote town, like this Berber town, and we stopped the car. And I looked behind us, and at this nearby house, there are all these women who came out of the house, and they had their headscarves pulled over their faces because the men with us, and they were beckoning to me. And so I went over to them, and they let their headscarves go, and they had these beautiful, radiant faces and these beautiful smiles. We were just looking at each other, and we couldn't speak to each other, you know, we didn't know the language, but we were just looking at each other and smiling and just, they were so beautiful. I can't really describe it or name it, but that's, that's the joy I get in these trips.